Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to talk about my most anticipated releases for the fall. I consider the fall to be September, October, and November. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about 20 books that come out in those months that I am interested in, that I think sound cool. They're not all ones that I'm necessarily going to read, they're just ones that I wanna keep an eye out on. It is currently September 13th, so I'm filming this a little bit late, and honestly, a lot of the September releases I'm gonna talk about have already come out but I still wanted you guys to know about them. If you're new to my videos, I read and talk about a mix of genres here on my channel. I primarily am an SFF reader, leaning more heavily to the fantasy side of SFF, but I also read a smattering of other genres like mystery thrillers and horror and historical fiction. And all of those genres are included in this video today. I also read a mix of both adult and YA books, so you'll see that as well. All right, let's get started with September. It is the month that I have the most books to talk about in, and like I said, a lot of these have already come out. The very first one I wanna talk about came out on September 1st, and that is We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. And if I look this way, I'm filming in front of my computer so I can reference Goodreads as I go along. This book came out on September 1st from HMH Books for Young Readers. This is a YA historical fiction, and it's set in San Francisco shortly after or maybe during World War II. It follows 14 teenagers who are Japanese American and it's about how some of these families were forced into incarceration camps. I have heard of the author Tracy Chi before but I haven't read any of her works but the subject matter of this book is really interesting to me. I have to admit I don't know that much about this time period and the incarceration of Japanese Americans. I know that it happened but I don't know that much about it and so I'm really interested in the plot and while I'm not Japanese I am half Korean and so the Asian aspect of the story is important to me. The next book I want to talk about is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This came out on September 1st from William Morrow. This is an adult mystery thriller, although I saw my friend Mara from Books Like Whoa in her Goodreads review that she said that it kind of reads or leans a little more horror because it's more of a, like a slow burning story, which definitely made me even more interested in it. This book caught my eye because the author Alyssa Cole is typically a romance writer. She's really well known for the Reluctant Royals series as well as the Loyal League series, which is the one that I'm a little bit interested in. It's a historical fiction romance set during the Civil War and about a black slave who is a spy and falls in love, I don't know with who, but that one I'm kind of interested in. It also sounds like Alyssa Cole takes the opportunity to explore systemic racism and gentrification and other social issues, which I think I would really enjoy, especially considering that I enjoy reading mystery thrillers. The next book I wanna talk about is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and this looks like it's gonna be the first in a series. This also came out back on September 1st, from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. This book caught my eye initially because of the author, Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I have not read any of her books yet, but I have one of her series on my TBR. I've heard a lot of really good things about the Naturals series. Another reason why this one caught my eye is this little blurb I read. It says, a Cinderella story with deadly stakes and thrilling twists, perfect for fans of One of Us is Lying and Knives Out. So this is a YA mystery thriller, and I was definitely really excited about the Knives Out part of this description. I recently watched Knives Out a few months ago, and it is definitely one of my favorite movies. It was so good, although I will say that that movie at parts gave me a lot of anxiety. So this one is about Avery, and she is in high school, and one day a billionaire dies and leaves everything to Avery, but nobody knows why. It says, to receive her inheritance, Avery must move into a sprawling, secret passage-filled Hawthorne house where every room bears the old man's touch. 
and his love of puzzles, riddles, and codes. So you can definitely see the connection to Knives Out, and that just makes me really excited. The next book I want to talk about is The Reckless Afterlife of Harriet Stoker by Lauren James. This came out on September 3rd from Walker Books. This one caught my eye because of the author, Lauren James. I have actually read one of her books before. Last summer, I read The Loneliest Girl in the Universe, and I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun, so I have been and wanting to read more of Lauren James. Admittedly, I haven't yet, but this one definitely sounds interesting, and it's a little bit outside of her typical genre. She usually writes more like science fiction books, and this is a paranormal fantasy, a YA fantasy. The story is, as you can imagine from the title, about Harriet Stoker and what happens to her after she dies. I have to admit that the synopsis itself doesn't sound that intriguing, but I did a little bit of digging, I read some reviews, I checked out the author's website, and I'm so interested in this now. Alice Oseman blurred this book. She said, Harriet Stoker is such a wild ride. Twisty plot, murderous ghosts, found family, slow burn romance. I was hooked from the very first chapter and could not put this book down. With characters I instantly loved and some I hated, this book is my favorite Lauren James story. It sounds like this book has a few of my favorite tropes and I'm super intrigued by it. The next book I wanna talk about is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart, which is the first book in the Drowning Empire series. This one is also already out. It came out on September 8th from Orbit. This is an adult high fantasy, an epic fantasy, that looks to be an Asian-inspired fantasy, which is why it originally caught my eye. The author, Andrea Stewart, is Chinese-American, and it sounds like the book has some Chinese inspirations. The beginning of the blurb says, in an empire controlled by bone shard magic, Lin, the former heir to the empire, will fight to reclaim her magic and her place on the throne. The bone shard daughter marks the debut of a major new voice in epic fantasy. One of the book Instagrammers, book influencers that I followed, Delaney, was just saying the other day that she thinks this is one of her favorite books of 2020. She even called it the best debut of 2020. And if Delaney loves it that much, it's definitely one that I want to check out. The next book I'm going to talk about is Nightshine by Tessa Gratton. This came out on September 8th from Margaret K. McElderberry Books. I have to admit, I don't love this cover, but this book caught my eye because of the author, Tessa Gratton. I've only read one Tessa Gratton, and it was an adult book of hers that was Queens of Innes Lyra, and I absolutely loved that one. This is a YA fantasy. The beginning of the synopsis says, an orphan girl must face untold danger and an ancient evil to save her kingdom's prince in this lush romantic fantasy perfect for fans of Girls of Paper and Fire and Tess of the Road. Melanie from Mel to the Any, I will link her channel down below, has a good re review up and says, sapphic enemies to lovers romance, queer bodyguard and royalty romance, dark fairy tale setting, magic, gender and sexual fluidity, yearning, demons, dragons, unicorns, lots of cute tiny creatures to love, atmospheric, lush, purple prose perfection. Are any of these keywords getting to you? Yes. They did. Especially dragons and unicorns. Justina Ireland blurbed this as Queer Hal's Moving Castle, which sounds really good. Okay, the next book that I want to talk about is The Trials of Coley, the second book in the Rampart trilogy by M.R. Carey. This book is coming out on September 15th from Orbit. This is a sequel to a book that I read earlier this year called The Book of Coley. This is an adult science fiction book. Although I do think this series has some YA crossover potential because the first one was a bit of a coming of age story and the protagonist was a teenager. This is going to be a trilogy and one thing that I love is that they're releasing each book six months apart instead of a year apart. This is one that I will definitely be reading and you will be hearing about on my channel in the future because I requested an advanced reader copy off of the website NetGalley and I was approved. I really love the setting of this world. It is set in the future but in a regressed society. So it's set in a future of Earth where plants have developed a taste for flesh and have kind of taken over the world and humans have resorted to living in these really small villages and a very primitive lifestyle. But there's still a lot of like really advanced technology laying around. If you've played the video game Horizon Zero Dawn, the setting is kind of like that. I really enjoyed getting to know Coley in the first book and the way that that book ended definitely left me thinking that the story is going in a certain direction that I am 
very interested in, and I'm really excited about it. Another book coming out on September 15th that I am excited for is Horrid by Katrina Leno. This is coming out from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. This is a YA horror book and it caught my eye because of the author Katrina Leno. I haven't read any of her books but I've been hearing her name a lot over the last couple of years. In 2018 her book Summer of Salt was on a lot of people's favorites for the year list and that was a I think YA contemporary fantasy. And then last year I was hearing her name because of her book You Must Not Miss, which I think was more of like a dystopian? No, it sounds like another like contemporary fantasy. Anyways, this one being YA horror is obviously very different from those two, so I'm intrigued to see what people are going to think of it. The beginning of the blurb says, from the author of You Must Not Miss comes a haunting contemporary horror novel that explores themes of mental illness, rage and grief twisted with spine chilling elements of Stephen King and Agatha Christie. One of my favorite booktubers, Riley Marie, said that this book was so creepy and very fucked up. Exactly what I want when I read a horror book. All right, we're coming down to the last couple in September and ones that hopefully aren't out yet by the time you see this video if I get it posted when I want to. The next one I'm going to talk about is Sky Hunter by Marie Lu, which is going to be the first book in the Sky Hunter series. And this one is coming out on September 29th from Roaring Book Press. This one caught my eye because of the author Marie Lu. I've read a number of her books and really enjoyed them, but I haven't read any of her science fiction. I've only read a couple of her fantasy books in the Young Elite series. This one sounds like it's set on another planet and the main character is a refugee that is fighting for the freedom of their nation. Honestly, the synopsis doesn't really jump out at me, but I'm mostly interested in it because of the author. I've also heard Marie Lu speak at a couple of panels before, and I just think she's great. And then my last book for September is A Deadly Education, the first book in the Sholomance series by Naomi Novik. This is also coming out on September 29th from Del Rey Books. I've read a number of books by Naomi Novik and really enjoyed all of them. I read a few books in her Tremere series years ago, like 10 years ago before Booktube. And then more recently, I read Uprooted and Spinning Silver and absolutely loved both of them. So I'm very excited about her newest book and I'm excited that it's going to be the start of a series. I believe this is going to be an adult fantasy Although I do see it shelved as YA on Goodreads and I went to the publisher's website and they have it categorized as a coming of age fantasy so I'm not really sure but to my knowledge everything that Naomi Novik has written in the past has been adult. But it does sound like it has some crossover potential and is suitable for younger readers. So the first sentence of the synopsis says, A deadly education is set at Sholomance, a school for the magically gifted, where failure means certain death for real, until one girl, L, begins to unlock its many secrets. Definitely sounds up my alley. Okay, now we're finally moving on to October. Another one that I am really excited about is Over the Woodward Wall, which is going to be the first book in an untitled series, according to Goodreads. This is by a. Deborah Baker, which is a pseudonym for Seanan McGuire. This is another one that I had a hard time figuring out what age category it's being marketed for. My guess is that it is for adults because I think it has some tie-in with Middle Game, which I believe also was being marketed for adults. But on the publisher website, it just says that it's suitable for all ages. On Goodreads, it's shelved as like middle grade and YA. So I don't really know exactly what age category it is, but it's definitely a fantasy. It sounds like it could be a little bit inspired by Alice in Wonderland, or at least it has a similar type of whimsy to it. The beginning of the synopsis says, writing as A. Deborah Baker, New York Times bestselling and award-winning author Shauna McGuire introduces readers to a world of talking trees and sarcastic owls of dangerous mermaids and captivating queens in Over the Woodward Wall, an exceptional tale for readers who are young at heart. If you don't know, I love fairy tale retellings. Not that this is like a specific fairy tale retelling, but I think it's going to have a very fairy tale feel to it, and I'm super excited about it. Okay, switching gears a little bit, this one is a different genre, but the next book I wanna talk about is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher, which is also coming out on October 6th from Gallery slash Saga Press. This is an adult 
horror book. This one caught my eye because of the author T. Kingfisher. I haven't read any of her books before, but last year a lot of people were talking about her book, The Twisted Ones. And so when I saw that she was coming out with a new horror book, I was definitely intrigued. The first paragraph of the synopsis says, a young woman discovers a strange portal in her uncle's house, leading to madness and terror in this gripping new novel from the author of the innovative, unexpected, and absolutely chilling The Twisted Ones, which that little description of The Twisted Ones was from Mira Grant, who is also Sean and McGuire. Also, the last paragraph of the synopsis caught my eye. It says, with her distinctive, delightfully fresh and subversive prose and the strange sinister wonder found in Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth, which is a movie I like, the Hollow Places is another compelling and white knuckled horror novel that you won't be able to put down. Okay, so the next one I want to talk about is Broken Wish, which is the first book in the Mirror series by Julie C. Dow. And this is coming out on October 6th from Disney Hyperion. I haven't read any Julie C. Dow yet, but I very much want to. I actually just hauled a couple of her books in my last haul, and I'm hoping to read them soon. This is a YA fantasy, a historical fiction fantasy, historical fantasy. It's set in 1865 in Germany. And this one also seems to have a bit of a fairy tale feel to it. The main thing that caught my eye was I was reading what Julie C. Dow said on Goodreads about it. She said this book is the first in a four book series called The Mirror, all written by different authors, which I think is really interesting. And it's about a curse that spans multiple generations of the same family. And she's kicking off the series with the first branch of the family and detailing how the curse first began in the 1800s with a young girl named Elva who meets her destiny when she goes looking for the Witch of the North Winds. Broken Wish has everything that I love, fairy tales, magic, romance, dark woods full of legend and mystery, and complicated, misunderstood women. That sounds really good to me. The next book I want to talk about is Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz. This is coming out on October 6th from Page Street Kids. I very first heard about this book from the Social Distancing Book Festival that was hosted by my friend Bethany from Beautifully Bookers Bethany. I will link her channel as well as the playlist of panels from that book festival down in the description box. But this is a YA fantasy that is kind of set in our contemporary world but has dragons and it's about a dragon race. It says, experience the World Cup with dragons in this debut fantasy set in an alternate contemporary world in which riders and their steeds compete in an international sports tournament. And you know me, I love dragons. The idea of a whole book set around dragons racing is really intriguing. I'm a little unsure about the contemporary part of it because I feel like I would rather have seen this in a fantasy made up world, but I'm still very much intrigued by that. The next book that I'm going to talk about I'm super, super excited for is one of my most anticipated releases of the year, and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Swab, and this is also coming out on October 6th from Tor Books. I have been so excited about this book for over a year now. I feel like Victoria Swab, or also known as V.E. Swab, has been talking about it and teasing it for a long time now. And I've seen a few reviews start trickling through for this one, and people seem to be really loving it. So the book is set in France in 1714. It says, in a moment of desperation, a young woman makes a Faustian bargain to live forever and is cursed to be forgotten by everyone she meets. That's all I need to know. That sounds fantastic. Like I said, people are already giving it great reviews. Lala from Books and Lala gave it five stars. Her review just says, oh shit. <laughs> Melanie from Mel to the Any also gave it five stars. My friend Kristen from Sp Super Space Chick gave it five stars. Alexa from... Alexa Reads Books, I think is her channel, also give it five stars. Delaney, the bookstagrammer I mentioned earlier in this video, also gave it five stars. Just people are really enjoying it. I don't want to overhype it, obviously, and I want to go in cautiously optimistic, but I'm not going to lie, I'm very much anticipating this book. The next book I want to talk about is Black Sun, which is the first book in the Between Earth and Sky series by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is coming out on October 13th, which is the day after my birthday, from Saga Press. 
This one caught my eye because of the author, Rebecca Roanhorse. I have read one of her books before and honestly, it wasn't my favorite. I've read Trail of Lightning by her. It's an adult urban fantasy. This one is an adult high fantasy, which is a little more up my alley than urban fantasy. So I'm hopeful that I'm gonna like it more. So the first paragraph of the synopsis says, inspired by the civilizations of pre-Columbian Americas and woven into a tale of celestial prophecies, political intrigue, and forbidden magic. And those are a few buzzwords for me. Prophecies, political intrigue, forbidden magic. All of that sounds really good and I am super interested in the idea that it's inspired by pre-Columbian Americas. And my friend Mara from Books Like Woe gave this one five stars. She said, this is high fantasy exactly the way I like. Character driven with political machinations, an interesting non-basic bitch me medieval world with cool magical elements that doesn't lag and keeps me engaged throughout. That just sounds amazing. And now we get to move on to November. We're almost done, guys. The next book I'm gonna talk about is One by One by Ruth Ware. This is coming out on November 12th from Harville Secker. I read my first Ruth Ware last year. I read Turn of the Key and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was so much fun. I haven't gone back and read any more of her backlist yet. I think I will read some of her other stuff eventually, but the synopsis of this one, her newest book, really sounds interesting to me. If you don't know, Ruth Ware writes adult mystery thrillers. And this one sounds like it's a bit of an isolated, what is that called? An isolated, I'm blanking, but there's a term for this like trope. Oh, an isolated closed circle mystery. Because it's about a group of coworkers that get trapped by an avalanche. One bit of the synopsis says, when an offsite company retreat meant to promote mindfulness and collaboration goes utterly wrong when an avalanche hits, the corporate food chain becomes irrelevant and survival trumps togetherness. Come Monday morning, how many members short will the team be? And I really like survival stories. So that's another aspect to the story that I think will work in my favor. The next book I'm excited about is Phoenix Extravagant by Yoon Ha Lee. This is coming out on October 20th from Solaris. Or Sol Solaris? This one caught my eye because of the author, Yoon Ha Lee. I haven't read any of his books yet, but I've definitely been interested in the Nine Fox Gambit series, which is an adult science fiction series. This one looks to be standalone and it's adult fantasy and it has dragons. My friend Rachel from The Shades of Orange was just telling me recently how much she loved this book. And it also looks like Justine from I Should Read That also gave it five stars. So I'm very excited about this one. Okay, the next book I'm gonna talk about is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, which looks like it's gonna be the first book in a series. This is coming out on November 17th from Margaret K. McElderberry Books. I have been seeing a little bit of buzz about this on Twitter. And one thing that really caught my eye is the author, Chloe Gong, is actually an undergraduate student and she is of Chinese ancestry. The synopsis for this one and the plot of this one just sounds so good that I had to put it on my list. It says, perfect for fans of The Last Magician and Descendant of the Crane, this heart-stopping debut is an imaginative Romeo and Juliet retelling set in the 1920s Shanghai with rival gangs and a monster in the depths of the Huangpu River. All of that just sounds really interesting. I have read The Last Magician and I really loved it. I haven't continued on in that series yet, but I definitely want to. I haven't read Descendant of the Crane, but I've heard really good things about it. My friend Elliot Brooks, really love that book. Also looking through Goodreads, my friend Joss from Yogi with a Book gave this one four stars and it says that she's ready for this one to become one of the biggest YA titles of the year. So that's got me really excited. Okay, that brings me to the last book on my list. I wonder how many of you will guess what it is. I mean, did you really think I was going to make this video and not mention Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson, which is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archives. This is coming out on November 17th from Tor Books. I am so excited for this book. If you've been watching some of my recent videos, like my reading vlogs and wrap ups, you might know that I am currently reading this series. I'm actually currently halfway through, a little more than halfway through Words of Radiance, which is the second book in the series. If you somehow don't know, this is an adult high fantasy series 
by Brandon Sanderson, who is one of my favorite authors. I was first introduced to him when he finished off the Wheel of Time series, and I've read some of his other books by now as well, and I've enjoyed everything of his that I've read. This is an epic high fantasy series that will eventually be 10 books, but I believe the first five are supposed to be like a complete arc and the second five are going to be a complete arc. These books are massive, but in my opinion, totally worth it. Sanderson is a master at world building and that's one of the things that I love about this series is the world in particular. It is so different from anything that I've read before. But on top of that, I also really enjoy his character work. I'm not gonna talk about it too much more. I'm sure most of you have heard of it, but this is my most anticipated release of 2020. So very excited about it. I wasn't gonna let this video go by without mentioning it. It just happens to come out at the end of November. So I saved it for last. All right, guys, those are all of the anticipated releases I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. They're definitely not the only anticipated releases I have. I actually had a hard time cutting this down to just 20 books. I do have a Goodreads shelf where I keep track of a bunch of releases that are coming out. So if you're interested in checking out what else I'm semi interested in, I will have that linked down in the description box. Let me know if you are excited for any of the books that I talked about in this video, or let me know if there's something that you're excited about that I didn't mention. I will say that there are some sequels to series that I haven't started that I am tentatively interested in, but I purposely don't include those in these videos because I haven't technically started those series yet. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more bookish content. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time bookworms, keep reading. Bye.